five. Okay. <laughs> All righty. I see by that little bitty button, that little red button over there in the top uh, corner, that we are live. L-I-V-E. We are live. Listen, let me give you this for Welcome free. Welcome, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I just want to give this to free because we were talking about live, L-I-V-E, live. When you live, because it's live now, but when you live, because the same thing, L-I-V-E, live, live. When you live right, uh-oh, L-I-V-E. If we live backwards, it's E-V-I-L. Take your time. Chew it up. Mm-hmm. E, if you have to, write it down. V-I-L, for those who called it. If we live contrary in reverse to what God says, E V I L, it's evil. <laughs> I didn't come up with it, y'all. It's just live backwards. If you live backwards, it's evil. So live going forward, live righteous, live moving toward the goals and destiny that God has for you. And all that I gave you was for free. So now, everybody that's coming on, we are so glad that you could be with us. Could have been anywhere, but you're right here with us. Um, Y'all put that nugget in your pocket, hold on to it. I know it's going to help somebody out. So, darling, uh, y'all can see that sitting beside me is this beautiful woman of God. So we just want to welcome you to Becoming One Outreach Ministries. Um, every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m., we do Bible study. I'm Pastor Carmella. I'm Pastor Troy. <laughs> uh, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., we have morning worship. Uh, Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock p.m. is our weekly prayer. And so we take very seriously um, the work of ministry, but Wednesday nights is really exciting, really special for us because we get to just break down the word of God in a very practical way so that you can learn, so that you can grow, so that you can live um, the God kind of life on the earth. So right? y'all can see that behind us, our background has changed from north, from where we have been previously. Uh, we are back in the church building. Yep, yep, we're back yep, in yep. the sanctuary. So we're actually setting the atmosphere, getting getting used to being back in the house because real soon. Starting June 8th, starting June 8th, mm -hmm. we'll be back having our Bible studies here in service. Clap right there. Yeah, we'll be serving dinner at 6.30 each Wednesday night and Bible study from 7 to 8. We do Bible study for one hour because when school is in, things like that, we don't want people to feel like, well, I can't bring them to Bible study because they're going to be in church two and three hours. So our Bible study is one hour, just like it is virtually. So starting June 8th, we'll do dinner at 6.30 p.m. every Wednesday. Bring the family out. Y'all have dinner. So that's one day a week. You don't have to worry about cooking. And then Bible study from 7 to 8 p.m. Yeah. I'm a, let me be quiet. I was going to say I'm excited, but if the excitement is building, it's building, it's building. And so soon, real soon, like you said, June 8, y'all put it in the calendar. June 8, we'll be back in service mm -hmm. for Bible study. So that's right. We'll still be going live, but we want to see your face in the place because yeah. it's, it's something about getting together and fellowshipping. Um. Man, when 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 we get together, God inhabits the praise of his people. So uh, we desire to see you here in the place. Put it in the calendar. Don't forget. Um, we're, we're getting ready to do Bible study. I just want y'all to get excited. Got to have the right frame of mind. Let's just say a little prayer right before we get started. And y'all say hello in the comments. Just in case. There's some things that may be setting on your heart, some things you're still holding on to, some things that are trying to distract or block you from receiving from God. We just bow our heads right here and pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, God, that the anointing will destroy the yokes of distraction, that the anointing Will, will, will allow us to lift up that heavy burden laid at your feet so that that burden, that thing that's distracting, that thing that has stopped us can be destroyed. We turn it over to you, Father. All of our cares we lay at your feet. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you will continually give us insight, revelation, and wisdom. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Good. I'm so glad that you laid it down. You're glad that we lay what down? Your burdens down, distractions, whatever it was that will stop you, block you. Because when we get in the Bible study, you need to be able to get wisdom. The scripture is clear, said, in all you're getting, get understanding. Understanding is the key to walking in wisdom. Wisdom is the understanding to open up the door for revelation. Yeah. Hello? Because once you get that 
uh, understanding and you apply the wisdom, uh, then that wisdom, it takes us into uh, places in God that we have not yet been. Amen. So I'm so glad that, that God is still sitting on the throne. And I pray that my horn will be exalted in Jesus' name. So let's go ahead on and get started. Um, we talk of, have and been talking about the anointing, the anointing. You can't talk about the anointing and not reference and talk about the Holy Spirit because the anointing did not come because you were gifted. The gifts are out repentance. You could be gifted, but not anointed. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, look, I'm just mm -hmm. sharing some things just so that just in case you missed it. That's good. You can be gifted, but not anointed. That's true. Now, you can have a gifting that might be a little bit lower than your brother or your sister, but more anointed. So they sing and sound good, but nobody moves. You don't sound as good, but in the spirit you connect. That's why it's not always the best singer that moves the house. Mm, I'm talking to somebody. Look, all of this stuff that you're getting is for free. We're talking about this anointing, and you got to make sure that your anointing is fresh. You got to have that fresh oil. You can't hold on to, and I, I, I think this was a few chapters ago where it talked about it. You can't hold on to what happened 20 years ago. You can't hold on to the oil from 20 years ago and say, oh, I was anointed then. Mm -hmm. I got that fresh oil then. Mm -hmm. I, I was operating under heavy and anointing then. Yep. You got to make sure that you get fresh oil daily. Every day. You can't freeze it. <laughs> I, look, I'm sorry. I, you can't freeze. You don't have some time. Y'all have seen it. Grandma in there put <laughs> with, the, with the, you know, the, the preservative. We can stuff. And it be just as fresh as she did it a year ago. With the it's day it's a daily process, so you have to make sure that our oil that we use yeah. is fresh. Amen. How do I get that fresh oil? It's all about relationship. It's all about fellowship. So you got to understand that, that the Holy Spirit um, was was used or typed as oil. So we got to have a fresh relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. old oil has contamination, has dust. It does not work in the purpose that we send it. The oil is for the lantern, it's for the light. When it has dust in it, contamination, it'll light, it'll go out. You got to relight the flame. It'll light, it'll go out. You got to relight the flame. Now, translate that to your life as a Christian when you're trying to operate on old or stale oil. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're excited, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. The wind, a breeze ain't even got to come. It just goes out. So if you're not careful, you know, you got it, then you don't got it. You got it, you don't got it. You got to keep fanning the flame, mm -hmm. not excuse me, not even fanning the flame, relighting because it your fire won't stay lit. Mm -hmm. So we all know some people that maybe try to operate on the old oil. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to be you. Amen. That's right. So put it in the comments. I got fresh oil. I got fresh oil. I like that. Amen. I got fresh oil. And I love one of the things that uh, they talk about in the book is unity. Body of Christ, the body of Christ, in and of itself, when you talk about the body, there's many members, but operating as one. Mm hmm you know, your, your eyes, you know, when you're in your car, your eyes, if your eyes don't cooperate with your hands, it's going to be a wreck. <laughs> That's right. If your eyes say, I see it, and your hands say, I don't care, there's going to be a wreck. Okay. You know, if your mind is saying, stop, and the light is red, and, the, and, the, and your eyes are saying, it, it's red, we need to stop, but your mind is saying, go. That's why it has to be cooperation in the body. If your left foot want to go left and your right foot want to go right, you're going to fall. Mm -hmm. That's why I love the fact that the, 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 the Bible says, you know, that the body of Christ, okay. when the body works in unity, we can walk. When the body works in unity, we can run. You, When you see somebody's body that's not working in unity, mm -hmm. that one side is out of sync, you know something's wrong. Right. I'm talking to the church now. We've got to make sure that we are operating in sync so that people can see that we got fresh oil Amen. and we are unified. Amen. 
the fresh oil is so important, y'all, so that you're not operating from an old place or an old mood. Mm -hmm. When you're operating off of the old stuff, we, you'll find yourself caught in a pattern where you're constantly trying to reproduce something that God did two years ago, three <laughs> years ago, five, ten years ago. But when God is trying to do something new in your life, he's trying to get something new to you. Mm -hmm. So that fresh oil means when I got fresh oil today, that means that I spent time in his presence right. today. Amen. And so the oil is a result of his presence and that's all we're saying is every day spend time in god's presence so that you can hear what he's saying for today so that you can move according to what he's trying to do in your life today mm -hmm. so when we look at the ministry of jesus christ because mm -hmm. he's our example mm -hmm. he did not do one thing the same every time mm -hmm. it was different mm -hmm. you know one time what he spit made clay Go wash, be healed. You know, <laughs> another time he prayed for the dude and he, uh, what do you see? I see men walking the street. He prayed again. Prayed again. You know, and his eyes were healed. So I'm pretty sure there were different ways. And he was trying to show us that, you know, even when we have this anointing, I love the scripture where it says, you know, that it is the, uh, it's the same spirit, but it is a different administration yeah, of, of the gifts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we use That's the, we, we use the illustration of electricity coming to your house. But it powers many devices. Yeah. That's why her gift don't mm -hmm. look like my gift. Mm -hmm. My gift don't look like her gift. Right. But the same gifts mm -hmm. will operate in power, though they may operate slightly different. Right. I've seen my wife prophesy in song <laughs> and the people go weeping and be crying. I'm telling you, wow, I could probably prophesy in song too, but the people would have to get over the fact that I'm going to skip some stuff. <laughs> I'm going to be out of sync and, and my notes won't be right. Um, but that's, that's that's her gifting. Amen. We can both prophesy, but it happens differently. Right. I know you've seen that before. So I'm excited. Now, what I want to do is go to the, the scripture in okay. Acts 4 and 31. I right. do believe that's the one where it says, and they had prayed and the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. boldness. Now, this was the third time that the apostles were filled. First, yeah. Jesus breathed on them. Yeah. Then they were gathered in the upper room where there was 120 and they received the infilling. Mm -hmm. Here, they were forbidden to speak or to preach the gospel. And they stood fast and said, we're going to do what God says, not what man said. And because they took a bold stance, they were filled from mm. that moment. Now, watch this. This is what the scripture tells us because there are four, excuse me, four things that happens here. First, we see they were unified. Now it says, and they had prayed. But before they prayed, it said the place where they were assembled together. So they had to get to the place together. There was unity first. Then there was prayer before there was a feeling. And then they had boldness. See, a lot of us want to walk in boldness without relationship. You just loud and you ain't saying nothing. <laughs> What, what are you saying, Apostle? I'm telling you, we, we want to say stuff without having a relationship with God. We want to say stuff without having consulted God. We, that, that's, that's when, you know, you could just say you're loud and you're wrong because you don't, need, you, you don't even get your marching orders. So first, there has to be unity. Unity means that we are we all on one accord. I love the fact now this is the second time they were in one accord. The other time when they were on one accord, it was the, the second in feeling where the Holy Spirit showed up like a mighty Russian wind. So for the believers, for the believers, unity is crucial for the move of God to take place. That's right. Because we're unified and we pray. And yeah. so if we pray, this the prayer is unity, then there comes a feeling. Yeah. And then there comes boldness. Yeah. We want sometimes we want the boldness without the unity and without the prayer. Yeah. You can't get the boldness until you first become unified. And then that feeling, you can't do anything until you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because a lot of times we want to skip that part. We move too fast. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to create something. We're trying, again, back to this. We're trying to manifest it in our own strength, in our own flesh. Unity sometimes takes time. But scripture says where there is unity, the Lord commands the blessing. Hello. So that's why that's step one. You got to be able to hear from the Lord in the prayer. And then the feeling is 
you're not just in there saying, I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, and God, you need to do this, you need to do that. You need to know the feeling process is where God speaks. Mm -hmm. This is a result of being in his presence. This is where you pause and allow God to do what he needs to do in you. Because that feeling is not just something that said, okay, now look, I got 15 minutes for all this stuff to take place. So we, let's get unified, pray, and let the Lord do what he needs to do so we can go to work. It don't work like that. You don't get to, we don't get to put God on some clock, on some time, on our own schedule. Amen. I think the feeling comes as a result of the obedience and what he's calling us to do. That's right. So it's not all, you know, you see it on the screen as a one, two, three, four, but it may not happen all in the same hour. You have to spend time in his presence. You, you said it. Unity mm -hmm. commands the blessing. Sure does. Meaning I'm obedient. See, yep. we use that term, <laughs> you know, oh, I don't want to be obedient. But if you're obedient, that means there's unity. Yep. I like it. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, I love the fact that what it says that the, that the Holy Spirit deferred to Jesus and Jesus, you know, deferred to God. They were all in agreement, Everyone you know, knows. as a part of the head yep. that we do what we see the Father do. Yeah. So the Father is commanding and they're in unity saying what he said is right because yeah. we're in agreement. They all got together and said, let us make man. They're in agreement. That's why I love the fact that the power of agreement, when we're in agreement, it magnifies the anointing on our lives. If one can chase a thousand and two can chase 10,000. So you know how awkward it would be if we were trying to teach and lead and we were not in agreement. If every time he said something, I said something contrary to mm -hmm. it. And every time I said something, he said something contrary to Come it. On. And we're bickering and going back and forth. It would, the leadership would feel it. The members would feel it. Yep. The kids would feel it. Mm -hmm. You would feel it. It would right. be very awkward. And guess what? We wouldn't be able to get anything done Nothing. because we lack unity. Mm -hmm. I, when you said anything done, all I can think about is the scripture was a double minded man That's it. receives no nothing thing. or no thing. I like to break <laughs> it down. A double minded man receives no thing or nothing. nothing. So when your mind is split, there's not unity. Mm -hmm. When your mind is not made up, there's no unity. You know, you're like, oh, let's go over here. No, let's go over there. Let's uh -huh. go over here. Let's go over there. Listen, can I talk to you? Look, you know what you want. And if somebody else is trying to throw out this idea and that idea, the next thing, you know, they change the next minute, you know, they throw out three ideas, then they say something again, you know, why you be like, stop, 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 you know, make up your mind. Because when a person's mind is made up, there's peace. Mm -hmm. Unity not only commands the blessing, it releases the peace of God mm -hmm. in your life. So you need the anointing to fight with. Right. I love the fact that Peter had the, uh, uh, when it talks about that that third anointing, you know, we've been talking about that kingly anointing mm -hmm. that that is uh, uh, the next level above that priestly anointing that the disciples walked in. And Peter, the example that they used with Peter was that his shadow was so powerful, not that there was a power in his shadow, but the power was in the faith of the people because right. of his presence. You know, being in relationship with the father, they're like, oh, if I could just just get his shadow passed by. Boom, I'd be healed. So th there are people that's got to have that same faith in the anointing. On your, it's, it's, it's often times, you know, it's so amazing that a person will have an anointing on their life and just don't know how, how powerful that anointing is. Oh, come on, y'all. We've been reading the book. Benny yeah. didn't know. Right. Well, come on, Benny right. didn't know. Can I talk to you and tell you something? You don't know. Yeah. The reason why you don't know, you're not ex exercising it like you should. You're not releasing it like you should. Uh -huh. You don't know the level of the anointing that's on your life because you've just been sprinkling it. You've been releasing it in a little bit. What happens when you have boldness? Mm. Whenever they made a bold stand because they were unified, there was prayer release, and they were filled, they operated in boldness and miracles. Signs and wonders follow the believers. Yeah. See, you and I, we got to step up and have a, a sense of urgency to, to, to showcase the glory of God. And wherever we go, there's an anointing that's on us and in us. You've got an unction to function. Why don't you just go ahead and release it? Amen. Oh, I mentioned to you before. I'm going to say it again. The kingdom of heaven is voice activated. When you decree a thing, it shall come to pass amen so amen. so peter i love the fact that when it said that that anointing that was on his life 
it was a stronger and a greater anointing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Picture this, if you will. Our physical muscle gets bigger and stronger the more we use it. The more right. we stretch it, we even get more flexible. Right. I've seen people that, that I thought their arms should have broke, their legs should have <laughs> snapped, but they had so much flexibility that they could actually put their hands behind their back and hold it like this mm -hmm. behind their back. I'm sitting there going like, man, there's no way. It looks impossible, but you got to understand what might be impossible with man is possible with God. That's right. Sometimes, even in the physical, we don't see the possibilities because we've not stretched ourselves to the full limit. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, they thought it was impossible for a man to run the mile in under four minutes. Now, we laugh at that now because, you know, uh, most of the fastest runner who on a world stage, they're running that three minute mile and, and, and even getting faster and faster, you know, year after year. What are you saying, Troy? We as believers, we've got to tap into and stretch the limits of where we've gone before. Amen. Don't settle for last year's anointing. Don't settle for what God has done. You got to make sure you want more. Do you want more? If you want more, put I want more in the comment. There's more in God and I want it. Amen. I like that. It says that anointing was stronger on him, but it also says um, the third anointing brought greater power in the lives of the apostle and the addition of many, many souls to the kingdom. Amen. The result of us being in God's presence and operating from a place of obedience and from a, 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 a new level of authority and representing the kingdom, it always leads people to Jesus. Amen. We are leading people to Jesus. We don't have to go and make anything happen if we would just stay focused on Jesus, if we're living the life that we're preaching about, that we're teaching about, that mm -hmm. you're sharing about, if your life truly represents Christ, mm -hmm. people will want what you have Amen. and the kingdom will increase. Amen. I want more. He said, I he, see it. I he, want he, more. He added to the kingdom daily. daily. Who did? The Holy Spirit yeah. did. At it daily. Jennifer says there is more in God, and I want. It. Amen. I want more. I want, we've got to decree a thing. We've got to declare a thing. Yeah. When we declare, I want more. You know, it's up to the Holy Spirit now to define that more. You know, Lord, yeah. I want more. I, I know it when I see. Y'all ever, you know, you've been yeah. looking for something other. I'm looking for that new outfit, that new that new shirt, yes. or that new the new pair of shoes. I, I I I have a look here, but and you can't really explain it sometimes. But you'll know it when I see it. when you see it. <laughs> Lord, I want more. I, right. I'll know it when, when I, I see that's it. That's it, God. That's it. You know, so I want more. I want more. Um, and and I'm I get excited when 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 I understand that what we're living out is what Jesus promised. Yeah, you know, Lord, I want the promise to be fulfilled in my life. He mm -hmm. told the, he told them, Y'all go and wait till the promise comes. Mm -hmm. We're walking out the promise now. We're living out the promise mm -hmm. now. You shall receive power to be witnesses. You, look, if you got power and you're not witnessing, it's like having a battery that's not being used. Whoa, that's good. Key, you got the keys, you got the battery. It's like, matter of fact, I'm going to talk to the car enthusiast. You got a 67 Shelby Mustang that's got raw power. Boom, you can turn <laughs> you, know how, look, you don't know unless you've been there. When, you, when you mash the gas, the whole, the, because there's so much power and torque in the engine, it goes like this. Boom, boom, boom. The whole car, it hadn't moved from the spot, but it, Ooh, it's like it just revs up boom, boom, <laughs> that you got the power right there. Yeah. But your key is off. Don't don't nobody know who you are, what you got or the God you yeah. serve because you're not operating. You you want to see souls being added. Then we got to witness. Amen. If we don't witness, then that kingly anointing is like a king without a kingdom mm. or a king who does not decree. A king who does not declare. See. You have not because you ask not. not. Come on, somebody. So we, we desire to walk in unity. And I love the, one of the things that it said, brought in the book. It says, in Acts, we find complete 
unity, not fractured unity, oh, not good. unity, you know, on Monday, but we're fractured on Tuesday. It's complete unity, complete. 365 days of unity, mm. seven days a week, That's unity, good. 24 hours a day, unity. We as believers need to be unified. Yes. Don't don't worry about the how. God's going to take care of the how. Right. We just need to agree. See, like those people that wasn't even saved, we're going to build a tower. They they were unified. We're going to build a tower so we can try to touch heaven. And God said, I got to go down and look and see what's going on. Why? Because them folks were unified. They were unified. If the body of Christ could just be unified, we could get God's attention. Ooh, mm, so unity. That's powerful. Unity. When we walk together, good God, man, we, God, God, God said, my children are, are operating in unity, in yeah. harmony. I got to go see what's going on. Oh, come on. Who, who, who in the house want to make their daddy get off the throne? <laughs> uh, I got to go check on my children. They unified. Yeah. They all on one accord. Glory. All right. So we understand that when we get together and we all on one accord, that the miraculous mm -hmm. shows up. Mm -hmm. That miracles shows up. Yes. Because signs... And wonders, I know I keep saying this, I'm gonna say it till it clicks and becomes revelatory. Signs and wonders follow the believers. The believers. Mm -hmm. If you're a believer, you're a candidate. You're a if candidate. you're a believer, you qualify. That's if you've right. got relationship with him and take pick up your cross daily, you are already man. It's like having it's like having a credit line available to you, but you never go use it. Not realize that you already qualify for the money, but because you won't go say yes, you can't have it. Amen. Is there anybody here ready to say yes? Say yes to God's will. Yes, Lord, God. I'm ready to be used by you. You want to be used by the Lord? I'm asking the question. I need for you to say yes. Something greater, something different, something stronger. I want to be you. God, do something new in your life. God, do something new in my life. I can prophesy. I can, do, Lord, use me in a new area, in a new way. Stretch me just a little bit more. I say yes to you, God. I want something new. I remember when um, I was praying for God to do something new. Lord, I want to start seeing and having a little bit more visions, a little bit more visions, a little bit more vision. And God showed me the vision. Now, I didn't jump up and say, ooh, I'm going to interpret the vision myself. When God showed it to me, I said, okay, God, now you showed me something new because I've been asking for something new. Now, give me the understanding of what it means. And I went to my wife, and when I told her within two weeks, maybe three weeks, that thing that I had said, it came to pass. I'm not talking so much about what I said, but the fact of the matter that what God showed me, when I asked for the interpretation of what he showed me, I'm telling you, if we don't exercise the anointing, we'll never see the growth that we're hungry for. Amen. Say yes. And when God begins to show you something, don't pull back. Don't get scared. Be bold. Amen. I love this too, because when it talks about complete unity in this same chapter, he talks about um, being careful of lone rangers, people who um, don't connect with other people mm -hmm. who think they know it all, got it all together, can't be taught, can't be corrected. That is not um, evidence of the Holy Spirit truly mm -hmm. working in your life because the we understand when you've spent time in God's presence Amen. and the Holy Spirit is evident in your life that you understand that what he's given to you is for somebody else. Yeah. And so that you're at a place where you're always willing to learn. You're always willing to serve. You're always leading people to Christ. Amen. But Christ was a servant. And so he he didn't come, even though he did know it all. And even though he could have had that stance, he is our example. And we are to do what we've seen him and the father do. I'm still stuck on that. The Lone Ranger. You know, mm -hmm. we all know Christians that want to fly by the seat of their pants, uncovered, ain't got no covering. I don't need to. I don't need to have a covering. Jesus got a covering. What do you mean you don't need a covering? Huh? Come on. I mean, that's why the apostles that and, and, and everybody else, even the, the, the members where they were sent out in twos. When you look at the disciples, they didn't go by themselves. Mm -hmm. They went out in twos, you know, just in case uh, one failed, uh, just in case, you know, one 
you know, needed some some like one was praying and one was worshiping or whatever. But but w- this thing works better if one can chase a thousand. Together, y'all. One can chase a thousand. Two can chase ten thousand. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's that it's like the law. Of, I won't say like the law of multiplicity or whatever. You know, but it's God math. Yeah. You know, we can we can accomplish greater when we are together. That's it. So That's it. we're better together. Amen. We're better together. And we and and we always want to learn and grow. I remember I was talking to um a leader and um and I excuse me, I really wanted them to to you know to kind of coach and mentor us. And um she said, Well, if you needed help, you would have asked, right? Because I'm very inquisitive and I will ask questions. And I said, Yes, I would ask, but what if I thought I was doing it right mm-hmm. and I wasn't? Right. And so that's why you always need somebody else. Um, that has gone before you, somebody else that you respect, um, that can that can speak into your life. Amen. They don't. We're not talking about having somebody lord over mm-hmm. you. That mm-hmm. we got one Holy Ghost. Right. You don't need a Holy Ghost in the flesh running around here telling you, did you do this? Did you do that? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about somebody that the Lord has assigned to mentor you. Mm-hmm. You. It was. Um, was it Paul and was it Barnabas? Who I'm mixing them up. Who was it? Um. Paul, he had Barnabas. Um, he had another one that was with him as well. But they had but each yes, other. They were right. always they always had somebody pouring into them, and they were always pouring into somebody. Mm-hmm. And that's the type yeah. of uh, reciprocity that we should have in the body of Christ. Right. Somebody is pouring into you, so you're not giving from an empty glass. Amen. And then you taking what God has given to you, and you pouring it into somebody else. Mm-hmm. That's right. Amen. Mm-hmm. I know that at one point in time, you know, mm-hmm. um, 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 Timothy. Uh, was was with oh, yeah. Paul for a there little you while, go. There you but go. it wasn't until Timothy was a little bit more seasoned, yeah. you know. So I mean, you know, I, I'm not going to take anybody that's that that's not necessarily ready. I want to make sure that we 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 own the battlefield and we season them. But now, if we're going to be, a, a, I'm your mentor, and I look at this thing like Elijah and Elisha, right? You know, so whenever he came by and Elijah put the cloak on Elisha, you know, the cloak was saying, you've been chosen, now follow me. So that word, when we follow, uh, that, that means now I'm in discipleship. You are my mentor and I'm your mentee. I, I often look, and you can always trace the lineage, not always, but there's usually a lineage of whenever, it was say for instance, Smith Wigglesworth um, had uh, mentored Lester Summerall. Lester Summerall, uh, mentored uh, the, the preacher Rod Parsley. So Rod Parsley has connection to Summerall. Benny Hinn had connection to Smith Wigglesworth. Um, so that, there's always that connection. You know, you, you know, and I hear people say, well, so-and-so has laid hands on me and there was a transfer of anointing. And so you, what you got to understand is that, yes, that, that sometimes happens when there's a mentorship. However, you know, remember, God does things different and he does things new. So I don't get hooked up in that because... Mm-hmm. There have been people that had no affiliation to anyone, and God raised them up. Yeah. You know, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. So I would rather be anointed by God than to receive a truth. That, that don't mean that, that, that don't God. that don't mean that people hadn't laid hands on me. I had <laughs> I had them to do that. Amen. But what I value is it's the same anointing that was on Jesus. Right. All of us, we don't own this anointing. Right. Hello. That's the, right. It's given to us and we partake right. of it. So I'm excited to be able to share with what God is doing, because when we when we give it, it, it comes back to us, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Yeah. And to summarize all of that is just make sure that you're in a place. You never get to a place where you don't feel like you can receive something Amen. from somebody. Amen. That's all we're saying. Amen. We can all receive something. From somebody. Amen. You can learn from a baby if that's who God want to use. Hello. I've received revelation from some of the cra- watching. Thanks uh, for jumping on, Barbara. Bless you. What's the movie with Rafiki and Mus- Simba and Nala? Uh-huh. And, and there's so much revelation in that when just in that movie alone. I was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's so powerful. You know how the the son had to follow in the father's footstep at first when he was small, his roar. See, that's why you got to realize the anointing that's on your life. It may not be it may not be as as 
full as the anointing that's on your father's life. Mm -hmm. That's why as believers, we've got to be spiritually mature okay. and we got to mature in this thing daily. We've got to, we've got to increase in the knowledge of God. We've got to increase in our revelation. We got to increase in our relationship okay. so that our power and our, the, 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 the anointing that we release increases. Okay. So it does not mean Say, for instance, somebody said, oh, he, he just can't pray for headaches. That's the beginning. You know, you're a believer. And so now you can pray for headaches and headaches are gone. Next thing you know, it's toothaches. Next thing you pray for somebody with their knees that are hurting, their knees don't hurt anymore. You know, so the more we begin to exercise the anointing on our lives, the more growth that we have. Right. So don't get upset or don't get scared because your role don't sound like your father's right. roar. Um, you know, just make sure that you find those people. And I love the fact that the matter is that God has not stopped moving in the things that he's done. A lot of times we want to go back to the Bible says, well, you know, Moses did this and Daniel did this. But but who has moved lately? We may all know somebody that's moving under that anointing. I like the fact that they mentioned a few people, uh, the Jeffrey brothers, John Edwards, D.L. Moody, Charles Fender. Perhaps these are some names that you've heard that they operated uh, under heavy anointing because they had a relationship with the father amen chapter 11 is about jesus the i am y'all all this is about jesus I, I am says it all you know and that was the that was the question that moses had he said who shall i say sent me <laughs> he said i am that's right that i am yep you got to chew on this thing. Okay, but I need to deliver. Well, I am that. I am what? A deliverer. I need a healer. Well, I am. I am what? That. I am. I'm the healer. Whatever you need him to be, he I love the fact that. he is that. that. That's why he was able to say the I am sent me. The, his name states, I've already got you covered. Amen. His name itself, the I am. And, and I love this fact that, you know, it talks about, you know, we say, uh, oh, you're talking about God. But in Hebrews, it let us know that Jesus was the express radiant image of the glory of God. And we even see in the Bible, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And so Jesus was tapping into th that, that authority because he knew he, he knew who he was. He knew who he is when he said, I am. That's powerful. Do you know who you are? I am a child of God. I am an apostle of the most high. I am a carrier of the anointing. Can you say I am? Mm. Mm. Come on. I am. That's good. I, come on. Just say whatever's on your heart right now. I am and fill in the blank. You got to say it. Come on. I am and fill in the blank. Whatever the Holy Spirit put on your heart. I am. I am. I am. And if you're scared and you're apprehensive, mm, I, my prayer is God give them the boldness that they need to decree it. Give them the boldness that they need to declare it. I am a soul winner. Come on. While you're asking the Lord to, to give you those words and while y'all are typing it in, I like in here where it says one of the primary roles of the Holy Spirit is to reveal our Lord Jesus Christ, is to reveal him to us. The role of the Holy Spirit is to bring all things to our remembrance, to, to, to help us, to reveal Jesus in who he is. It says, yeah. as the spirit of truth, he has taken the things of Jesus and reveals them to all who will listen all who will see mm -hmm. and all who will follow. It's a whosoever yes. will. If you're hungry for him, if you're willing to listen, he'll reveal him to you. If, re if, you're willing to, if you're willing to see, he'll reveal him to you. If you're willing to follow, he will reveal him to you. Mm. I am, fill in the blank, I am. Hey Amen. When you said that, I was sitting there like, ooh, I got to listen, see, see follow. and follow. Mm -hmm. it, and the fact of the matter is all three of those things have to work in tandem yeah. for you to be in unity. Yeah. I listen to what you said. Mm -hmm. I see what you said, what mm -hmm. you're doing. Then I, then I copy. Yeah. Fo follow means to imitate. Be, yeah. you know, be followers of Jesus. No, the, the, uh, even better pitch, not just follow, be imitators. 
Because mm-hmm. you can follow somebody without imitating them. Right. I'm walking back like that that woman that was was not a Christian uh-huh. that was operating under a spirit of divination. Mm-hmm. She followed them, but she was not. Mm, come on. Right. It was a different spirit. Right. So after a while, when Paul got vexed, he said, come out, cast that spirit out. Because the anointing, the anointing, amen, that, that's on our lives makes a difference. Well, then you're going to love these three words. So the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, comes to reveal Jesus to us, right? Mm-hmm. And said he'll reveal him to all who will listen, see, and follow. But down further, it, it also says... All is given that you may know, love, and serve him. So after you have listened, saw him, and you follow him, you learn to know him, love him, and serve him. Ooh, that's good. That's look my, like my old pastor, Pastor Castro said. It just keep getting gooder and gooder. <laughs> mm-hmm. Listen, see, follow. The byproduct of me. Listening, seeing, and follow, mm-hmm. I'll begin to know, know him, love, love him. and do. I know that mm-hmm. word says sir, but mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm gonna know, love, and I'm gonna do. Right. You know, and 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 so there was some times I've gotten phone calls. Mm-hmm. It's 11 30, 11 45, mm-hmm. but because the person that called me, I know them, I love them, and I don't mind doing if I get up out of my bed and go right. help them right. in the middle of the night, and I go do. You know, because there's relationship. Right. Mm, that's powerful in and of itself. Amen. Amen. And, and and you know, he he is so that we can be. So the great I am is speaking. I love the fact where it says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in the heavens. He speak it, it is over. Can I share with you and let you know that time doesn't affect the promises of God? Amen. C- can y'all put that in the con- time? That was Psalm 11989. Amen. Time does not stop God's promises. I don't care. 400 years, 700 years, 2,000 years. If God said it, it will come to pass. Right. Whether it was two minutes ago, whether it was uh, 20 minutes ago, whether it was two hours ago, two days ago, two weeks ago, six months ago, six years ago. If God said it, it will come to pass. All we got to do is trust him and know that his word is forever settled yeah. in the heavens. Amen. That ought Amen. to help somebody right there. If the I am spoke it, That's it will happen. The king has decreed it. Mm-hmm. He's already declared it over your situation. Mm-hmm. So the conclusion of the matter is once the king speaks uh, in the natural, that's law. In the spirit, once the king speaks, that's law. Amen. And God has spoken. Ain't that song that says that God has spoken? Let the church say, say amen. amen. Be careful. I, oh, y'all, this is a cat. This is right here. I gotta put it right here now. Be careful with your amens. Since mm-hmm. we don't understand what an amen means, we say amen to things we shouldn't. And the devil is a legalist. Because amen says, let it be or make it so. So the preacher may be saying something. That we don't want, but we hollering amen. <laughs> folks, folks today don't don't love God like they used to. They don't go to church like they used to. They don't they don't get the revelation. They don't know. Amen. I, I want them, I want them to get the revelation. Right. They need the revelation of God. Amen. Make it so. Let it be. You blessed. Amen. Make it so. Let it be. Our amens have to follow something that we want to happen. I'm blessed and highly favored. Amen. I'm the head, not the tail. Amen. God's going to show up and answer all of your prayer requests that you got right now in that, in that bowl in heaven. When you say amen, what you're saying is make it so or let it be. So we we, we got to make sure that whenever we're operating in unity now, we're using the anointing by faith. We're speaking by faith because you can use the anointing one way and say something contrary and cancel. Uh huh. I love that um, with the I am. He says it. He when he says I am, he answers all three questions: who, why, and where. Who are you? I am. Why are you? Because I am. And where are you? And I am. I am answers all three questions. Amen. He is the great I am. Mm-hmm. Um. 
and that answers everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Amen. I could go into details, but just know that when you say I am, and if you in his presence and you belong to him, that answers Amen. it all. Who, why, and where mm. you'll find me in his presence. He's always been. Mm-hmm. How long have you been here? I am. I've always existed. Oh, yeah. So that's that's really powerful. Um, I love the fact that uh, the, the next scripture from Colossians, the first chapter, the 16 and 17 verse says, for by him, mm-hmm. all things were created. Were created. I just need y'all to put A L L capital letter T H I E N G all with an S on it. All things, all things were created. All things. Just two words. All, all things. things. And if you want to put an exclamation mark behind it, got it? <laughs> exclamation mark. All things. All things. That are in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Mm -hmm. All things. All things. Whether it was thrones, dominions, Uh principalities, Uh or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Mm -hmm. And he is before all things. And in him, mm-hmm. all things consist. That's cool. Catch this. It's like, I'm creating everything. And because I'm creating it all, I was before everything was created. Mm-hmm. But now I'm creating everything and putting it in me. Because mm. all things consisted in him. Mm-hmm. In him, all things. He brought it out. How did he do it? By speaking it. Amen. Speaking it. Decreeing it. Declaring it. So, so why why don't we operate more like our big brother Jesus and start speaking what we want to see? Amen. You've got an anointing to destroy poverty. You've got an anointing to destroy uh, sickness. Yeah. You've got an anointing to destroy doubt, yeah. fear. Oh, I hadn't been out of my house in two years. Mm. Why? What are you afraid of? God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us love power in a well made up mind you get that look that's it says sound mind when you got a sound mind you know what ain't nothing wrong with your mind it's a sound mind it's a it's a it's a healthy mind it's a mind that understands the things of god and since god did not give us a spirit of fear you and i can walk in boldness knowing that everything god created mm-hmm. he has dominion over look it ain't like God created something and oops, it got away from him. He was like, well, I, I, I guess I'm not the ruler over that. Everything that was created, he created it. Now, for somebody who, who may come on and catch this later, what about, what about, what about? Can I share with you the thing that you're talking about? God created it for us, but because the devil was let loose, he took what God meant for us and turned it upside down. And that's why, you know, something now they said, oh man, no, God intended it to be for good. It's like a gun um, is used for hunters. A gun is used to protect your house. Somebody use a gun to rob. It is the intent of the user that determines whether it's good or bad. Can I talk to you and say that there have been people who've used their gift to heal and to help. There have been people who use their gifts to prosper and I'm going to give you just enough and tell you now that's going to cost you $100. And that's wrong. Hmm? I ain't trying to step on your toes. I'm just saying freely given, freely I receive, freely. Ha- that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother sermon uh, service. He created all things and he was before all things. Mm-hmm. Amen. Whatever you need is in him. Now talk to him. Don't talk to me about what you need. Right. Hello. What you do is you ask him. And if you need me to now, I'll come into agreement of what you already prayed for so that it can happen just that much faster. If one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. We're operating under heavy anointing here, y'all. I'm telling you. The powerful uh, word of God, when he said, I am, he holds all that. When we don't have, look, look, that's what the word says. He holds all things together. Mm-hmm. When we don't have Jesus in our lives, that's when things fall apart. Right. Your marriage may be falling apart. Why? Because I'm I'm doing it without the Lord. I'm doing it without Jesus. You 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 own your job, and you don't have Jesus on your job. 
because people don't know that you saved and you wonder why you're catching it. Now that don't not that don't mean that you're a believer, you've been fasting, you've been praying. The enemy's gonna come at you for one of two ways. He's gonna come at you to get you out of the will of God, or he's gonna come at you because you're in the will of God. Case in point, remember Paul. Paul said, I got to get to Rome. A storm showed up. The devil was trying to block him. Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh. He ran away. A storm showed up. I believe God caused that storm to get him back on track. Right. So this thing, you got to determine, you got to determine, am, am I going through now because of my obedience or am I going through because my rebellion? And disobedience. This, this this disobedience because mm -hmm. if you hear what god said and you don't do it in a timely manner and god says go now you're being disobedient well lord i'm gonna do it my way no if you don't do it yahweh's way you're being disobedient amen so you know please 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 if you don't understand how to do it say lord help me show me lead me guide me i don't want you to be like jonah i want you to be like paul amen amen Let me read this scripture here. Um, I, could, I, I said it a few minutes ago, but I want to give you the scripture, Hebrews 1 and 3, where it simply says, the Son of God holds all things up by the word mm -hmm. of, of his, his power. power. Did you catch that now? By the word of his power. Not the power of his word, but by, but by the word of his power, meaning his power spoke and it happened. So too often we we we, we want to live off of our word and say that our words have power, and they do. But when we tap into the power of the anointing and then the Holy Spirit speaks, that's the that's that's way more in line with what God has. By the word of his power, by the word of his authority. So don't speak it and try to make the authority happen. Speak in the authority of God and what you speak will happen. Amen. Because he said, I am. Now, in, in, in the book, it talks about the tree of life. Y'all remember that part? It talks about the tree of life. And, and, and I love the fact that Adam in the garden, in the garden, mm -hmm. had a choice. In life, you and I, we have a choice. Mm -hmm. Whenever God made Adam, he could have said, I'm going to make you holy. And I'm going to make you righteous. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And, and Adam would have had to be. But you and I could have come along and said, well, you know what? God, that wasn't right because you didn't give us a choice. God is holy. But at the same time, he says, I'm going to give man something that the angels didn't have called free will. And, and so man now has to make a choice. And so you and I have to make a choice. God said of all these trees you can eat. See, obedience is the key to operate in, in this anointing that we're talking about. Unity, obedience, oneness, following what the Lord says, doing what he says, you know, then we could be filled and we can see the power. Had Adam simply done right. Had Adam chosen the tree of life, he would have had to live, he would have, he would have had uh, lived in perfection forever. That would have been a glorious thing. However, he chose the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he began to know like God, but because he began to know like God and he didn't see in, in due time, I really truly believe in due time, God will allow him to receive the tree of life. Mm -hmm. And once he received the tree of life, amen, then everything else would have been fair game because I think he got it out of order. He should have had the tree of life first. Mm -hmm. Then he could have handled the knowledge. Right. You can't handle the knowledge if you don't have the life, the Zoe kind of life. Amen. So as believers, we want to have that God kind of life so that we can operate under this heavy anointing. And that was the reason why Jesus came. I love this description of John where it says he came to destroy the, the works of the enemy. And one of the things we understand is that the anointing destroys. So Jesus himself, according to Acts, uh, was anointed. 10 and 30, I do believe it is. He was anointed by God. That's why you need an anointing. That's why I need, need an anointing. We can't do it without an anointing. Amen. We can't do it without um, operating in that heavy 
obedience. Mm -hmm. So in various times, in different ways, um, God has spoke to us by his prophets. However, it says that in this present age, he's speaking to us by his son, Jesus now. And so once upon a time, you had to go to church. You had to you had to see the prophet. You, that's how God spoke. He spoke in many different ways, and he spoke through many different prophets mm -hmm. to give us the word that we need. He said, now I'm going to do a new thing, and you're going to know it. He, he began to speak to us through his son, right. and I got excited about that. And, and, and so now this son said, okay, I'm an express image. I'm, hold, I'm upholding all things. I'm going to sit down at the right hand of my father and I'm going to send back the Holy Spirit. Since the Holy Spirit's in us, everything that Jesus know, we can know, but we got to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. If I need to know something, if I go to my wife, she may only have limited uh, uh, understanding. If I come to you, you've got limited understanding. Mm -hmm. Why do we keep going to people right. when that we need to go to the Holy Spirit? The because the Holy Spirit is connected to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is connected to God. And I got excited and I've been excited about it, that scripture when it says that the Holy Spirit searches out the deep things of God. Amen. When we get more power, you can handle more. Mm -hmm. mm. Let me make it plain. That car that you're driving right now may have a little bit of kick to it. You mash the gas and it picks up and it goes. I've seen videos of people driving those muscle cars that go from zero to 60 in about three to four seconds. Mm-hmm. And they 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 own they they own the freeway not freeway they they on on a regular highway, and they're coming out of a turn on the corner, and they mash the gas so much power that they're not used to they can't handle it, and that thing that they invested in they crash, and tear up because they did not have the understanding on how to use the power. What I'm saying is just because you know you've been driving for a little while and now. You know, you that's why we, we we need to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us so mm -hmm. that we don't wreck, so that we don't shipwreck and we don't call others to to to, to shipwreck. You know, oh, I, I could drive any car. No, you can't. See, there are some cars that are manual and some cars that are automatic. If you learn on one, you may not be that good at the other. And some cars have more muscle and more power. And so you mash the gas and you can't control it. You can't handle it. As believers, I want us to be fully trained. This is tra we're training for raining. Yep. We're training for raining. So I want to give you, you know, kind of like three things right here that you're going to hear me say consistently um, in the coming months that we're going to teach you. We're going to train you and we're going to look for you to testify. Are you here? Because we're going to teach you about this anointing. We're going to train you in this anointing. Then we want you to testify about this anointing. Amen. You can you can be taught. If you are taught and you never do, you'll never release anything. Amen. So you got to teach and then you got to begin to do so that you can begin to testify. So once you teach, use that teaching in training and once you're trained it when that's when you begin to get test you begin you know mm -hmm. your test testimonies come because I'm, I'm using that training mm -hmm. on, on my job somebody had to teach me how to do you had to be taught how to ride a bicycle once they taught you then you begin to do once they somebody look i saw somebody riding a bicycle they were training me do this put metal do it like this now they train me by holding it up for me and pushing me and letting me go. And the manifestation of them teaching me and training me is now I'm doing it. See, that's the same way. Whatever you see your, your, your mentor do, begin to do like him. Jesus is the express image of the Father. And he said, I don't do what I want to do. I do what I see the Father do. And we'll close with Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. That was a, uh, the last question um, in the uh, discussion guide. Um, do you desire more and more of an understanding of the Lord Jesus? Write out Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. And it says, what's the advantage of making this a personal prayer? So I'm going to read Ephesians 16 through 19, but I'm going to read it as if it is a prayer to give you an example of how to take the word of God and turn it into a prayer. Because he 
um, excuse me, he honors his word. And so Ephesians 3, 16 through 19 says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen me with power through his spirit in my inner being so that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith. And I pray that I being rooted and established in love Mm. may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that I may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, write it out, say it over yourself daily say uh, and say it in first person. Don't say you, and they, and he said, I, and me, so that you can make it personal. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19, we're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, Amen. his role in our lives, and why we can't live without it. Amen. Amen. That prayer is going to change some things. You're asking God to fill you. Mm-hmm. Height, breadth, width, depth. <sighs> fill us, Lord. Yeah. Fill us all daily amen amen we love you we'll see you wednesday on sunday at 10 a.m if you want to give the links to give are in the description be sure to download our church app post your prayer requests on the prayer wall there's new pr- prayer requests that are there now that we've been praying over um today may god bless you and god keep you i'll be blessed till we meet again <laughs>